the inverse transformations or inverse transforms and transforms of derivatives. Uh, this uh, section takes the previous section and just uh, reverses the order. Uh, given the result of a Laplace transform, then we take that result and we can find the inverse of it, and that gives us the original function. So if you notice that uh, these uh, seven uh, formulas for the inverse transforms are just the uh, somewhat of the reciprocals of the initial uh, Laplace transforms in the previous section. So we use that information to our advantage, and, and thereby we can find uh, the inverse transforms. Let's begin uh, here. Uh, notice as we deal with this, notice that the Laplace transform of t to the second is equal to 2 factorial, which is just 2, all over s to the third. So if we divide through by a 2, that 2 factorial is just 2, so we have here 1 half times the Laplace transform of t to the second is equal to 1 over s to the third. So now taking the, uh, the inverse transform of both sides, gives you the result that you want, and, and that is basically the, the inverse transform. I'm going to write it like this, and so I'm going to write it out, and so hopefully after I, I do two or three problems, you kind of see it, and then you don't have to, to write everything out. And I'm fine, you know, with if you can kind of see what's going on and you can kind of jump to it. Basically, this result, if, if I were to jump right to the answer, this is one-half times t to the second. But I'm going to work it out, 1 half times t to the second. I'm going to work it out. I'm just going to blow it up. And so since they're taking the inverse transform of 1 over s to the third, we'll take the inverse transform of this side. It's tantamount to taking the inverse transform of the right side. So I'm going to start uh, with this uh, right side over here. So the inverse transform of 1 over s to the third is equal to the inverse transform of the one-half times the Laplace transform of t squared. Now this one-half is just a factor, so you can factor that out. This is one-half times the inverse transform of the Laplace transform of t squared. Now the inverse transform and the and the transform, the Laplace transform, they're inverses of each other. So you have uh, the result is just the original function. So here, all we have is 1 half times t to the second. Okay. Well, let's see if we can expand on that. Let's take this one. I'm going to work this out or simplify. This is the inverse transform of 1 over s squared minus the inverse transform of 48 over s to the fifth. Now I'm going to work that out some more. This is the inverse transform of 1 over s squared minus, fact out that 48, this is the inverse transform of 1 over s to the fifth. Now notice that the Laplace transform of t gives you 1 over s squared. So we automatically get the first inverse. And then the Laplace transform, if you have s to a power uh, for the inverse transform, you know that originates from t to the uh, that power minus 1. So I'm thinking the Laplace transform of t to the fourth because that's equal to 4 factorial all over s to the fifth. Well, this is 24 over s to the fifth. All right? So, so if you think about it, now that 24 can become a 28, a 48, excuse me, by multiplying by a 2. So, um, 
So here, so we're thinking two times the Laplace transform of t to the fourth is equal to 48 over s to the fifth. So now, if I take the inverse transform of both sides, this is the inverse transform of 2 times the Laplace transform of t to the fourth is equal to the inverse transform of the 48 over s to the fifth. So the, the 2 can be factored out. So this is 2 times. Now, the inverse of the Laplace transform is just the original function. That's just t to the fourth. Well, that's equal to the inverse transform of 48 all over s to the fifth. So we have the parts. And so, and the parts were the first part uh, just uh, gave us uh, the t, and I didn't work that out. Uh, let's, let's state that. And the inverse transform of 1 over s squared, I'm looking here, is just equal to t. Because the Laplace transform of t is just 1 over s squared. So I have the parts. This is that second part, and this is the first part. So here we get t minus the minus sign there two times t to the fourth. So so I answer t minus two times t to the fourth. Well, let's look further. So to, to find this inverse transform, then naturally we need to expand this numerator. So this is the inverse transform. We expand that by the binomial theorem. So this is s to the third plus 3 times s squared plus 3 times s plus 1. And then you wondered, when would you ever use that binomial uh, theorem, right? <laughs> So we're going to keep expanding. So basically, each numerator divided by our denominator, we can break down uh, this uh, fraction into its uh, parts, uh, this, this sum. So this is the inverse transform of this is s to the third over s to the fourth. Close that up. Plus 3 times the inverse transform of s squared over s to the fourth. Close that up plus 3 times the inverse transform of s over s to the fourth. Close that up, plus the inverse transform of 1 all over s to the fourth. Now, you can simplify that again. And typically, I would have done that just for this row right here. This is just 1 over s plus 3 times the inverse transform of 1 over s squared plus 3 times the inverse transform of 1 over s uh, to the third plus the inverse transform of 1 over s to the fourth. Now, for each one, I'm just going to write out in blue. So here, I think you see this, that this guy would automatically just equal to 1 because the Laplace transform of 1 is just 1 over s. Now for here, don't forget this 3 there. This is 3 times t because the Laplace transform of t is just 1 over s squared. Right? So, so here, the first one is just going to give us 1. 1 over s is not equal to 1. The, the inverse transform of 1 over s is equal to 1. Right? And so this gives us the 3 there times the t. 
Now you come here, let me just put these in boxes so we don't get them mixed up. You come here and you think the Laplace transform of t squared, well that gives us 2 over s to the third. But there's no 2 there, so just uh, here divide through by 2, so you get 1 half times the Laplace transform of t squared gives you 1 over s to the third. So this Laplace transform would be the 3 times the 1 half times t squared. And then for this guy, just look at that 4 minus 1. So you're thinking the Laplace transform of t to the third. Well, that's 3 factorial, which is 6 all over s to the fourth. But there is no 6 up in the numerator. It's just a 1. Well, I can get a 1 by just dividing here by a 6. So I get 1 over 6 times the Laplace transform of t to the third is equal to 1 over s to the fourth. So let's see if I can get some, some room there. Pull him down a little bit. See if we can see everything. And I'm looking at, uh, let's just say, this guy right here. And so that, well, I guess really, uh, I'm looking at this guy. So we have the first one, the inverse transform 1 over s is just 1. Then we come here plus a 3 times t, right? Because the Laplace transform of t is 1 over s squared. Then plus, come here, plus this 3. But notice that the Laplace transform of t squared is 2 over s to the third. So I only have a 1 there. So to get that 1, we divide out the 2. So we have 1 half. That's 1 half times that 3. So this is 3 over 2 times t to the second. Then plus, come to that last one. And that guy is a 1 over 6 times t to the third. And that's the answer there. OK? So now, now what are they doing? They're giving you parts of actually how you're going to solve differential equations using the Laplace transform. So they're giving you the parts of how certain solutions would look like. And so we're going to put everything together uh, and, uh, at the end of this section and actually solve a differential equation using Laplace transform. And then you'll kind of see how all this stuff works out. They're giving you all the parts and pieces right now. So we're looking at all the mechanics. So basically, you think about it for uh, algebraic problems. Uh, you, you look at uh, fractions. You look at functions, you know, functions that could be rational, that is fractions, functions that, that could be polynomials, uh, functions that could be logarithmic. You look at all possibilities. And so then when you want to solve those uh, complex functions, uh, you know all the parts. And so then you can put uh, the pieces together to solve any type of algebraic uh, 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 function uh, uh, that's out there hopefully. <laughs> so let's look at this guy. So we're going to break, break that down. This is the inverse transform of 1 over s squared. So you can see this is going to be a t minus the inverse transform of 1 over s, which is just 1, plus the inverse transform, as Shaq would say, get that out of there, uh, 1 over s minus 2. We got this thing uh, going on and so um, uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus and so uh, everything is now uh, restricted to online education and so here we are. So, so no NBA basketball for a while. Uh, everybody is just watching reruns and not that guy on what's happening. And if you're from my generation, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, so let's see. This gives us 
T, the inverse transform 1 over S squared, is just T minus 1 plus, this inverse transform of 1 over S to the 2 is E to the 2T, because the Laplace transform of E to the 2T is 1 over S minus 2. Okay. Well, that's all you have there. So let's look at uh, the next one. Okay, so with this guy, we are thinking about the the Laplace transform of let's say e to the uh, kt. I think that's how they they wrote it out. So this is one over s minus k. Right. Well, I see a s there. And, and the plus or minus is just with respect to the sign of k. It's no problem. But this s is not multiplied by a number. So if I'm going to use this formula, I cannot have that number 4 associated there with the s with no problem. Uh, that's why we know algebra. So we look at this as being 1 over 4 times parentheses s. We're just, we're just going to factor out a 4 from the, from the denominator. This is uh, s plus one fourth, as Miss Anderson would say. How about that? So, and you don't know Miss Anderson, so family friend, very sweet old lady. So this is one fourth. I'm going to factor out the one over four times the inverse transform of one over s plus one over four. And please don't ask, if you fract out of uh, the one-fourth, the one from the numerator, why is there still a one there? Oh, boy, I tell you, you better be glad this is online education, because if you're in my presence, boy, I'd, I'd do what uh, the apostles did, you know, would lay my hands on you. No, I'm just joking. Uh, no, I'm not. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> I just tease. <clears throat> so, so now I can use this formula here. Um, now, this one-fourth has not, nothing to do with the formula. This one-fourth just goes on the outside. So this is just the one-fourth, and that's that one-fourth there, right? Now, the inverse transform of 1 over s plus 1 over 4 is this e. Well, the formula says if it's e to the kt, then this is 1 over s minus k. So just the signs are opposite. So uh, this is plus, so this is going to be e to the negative one fourth t. Okay. All right. Now, with these guys, when you have s squared plus a number in the denominator, then you're thinking the Laplace transforms for either cosine or sine. Let's recall that. I want to write that up above. So recall that the Laplace transform of cosine kt is equal to, and you got to be able to memorize uh, those formulas. Um, the, the cool thing is that on, on the test, I, I do allow the, the formula sheet that's in the syllabus, so you can use that. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the Laplace transform of cosine kt, cosine uh, will always put uh, the the s in the uh, numerator, and the sign would put the k in the numerator. So the cosine puts the s in the numerator all over s squared plus k squared. And then the Laplace transform, and I just remember that just about opposite signs or opposite uh, if it's sine, then I don't put the s in the numerator. If it's cosine, C. Whoa. Sorry. Cosine KT. So here, if it's sine, then we'll put the K in the numerator, S squared plus K squared. I look at this problem, and this problem for the numerator does not have an S there. It's impossible to get an S. There, but if it's a number, then I can manipulate numbers 
right? So since there's no S in the numerator, then I know that uh, that this guy right here is not going to be cosine. So so I, I know what to uh, how to approach that. Now for the sine, the number K has to be there. K is the square root of this K squared. Well, K squared is 49, so I need to have a 7 up there. So here's how we're going to write this out. So I'm going to take that 5 and just multiply it times the inverse, divided by 7, times the inverse transform of 7 all over S squared plus the 7 squared. So this is 7 divided by 7. So again, if, if it's numbers, I can manipulate a number. 7 divided by 7 is 1. This is a 5, not an S. I just took the 5 out. So this is 5 over 7. This inverse transform, look, this guy looks like the form of this k over s squared plus k squared. So this is 5 over 7 times sine of 7t. Let's, let's move on. Let's look at this guy. Well, this this would be a challenge um, because I'm looking at this number four there and then that number four there. Our formulas don't really have anything for a number in front of the S. So we try to manipulate it. So this is the inverse transform. This is 4S over I'm going to factor out a 4 from our denominators. So this is s squared plus 1 over 4. Now, 4 divided by 4 cancels out. Now, I cannot divide out the 4 here because this is 4 over 4 s squared plus 1. I cannot divide out a 4, cancel out a 4 in division with respect to addition. It, it only has to be uh, to cancel out a number and division with respect to multiplication, 4 times s, 4 times this whole term, right? So this 4 here, 4s four squared plus 1, this 4 is within the sum. So that 4 is not out there by itself, right? So um, you think about like the number, it's like the number 47. Um, if you see 47, uh, then you also see 40 plus 7. But can you, can you just divide out a 7? from uh, uh, 40 plus 7 and just say all you have left is a, a 40? No, the, the original number is 47. So you, you couldn't factor out a 7 from that, right? So uh, so that, that's what they're saying with the sum. So now you can cancel out the uh, 4 divided by 4 in division with respect to multiplication. So this is left the inverse transform of s over s squared plus 1 over 4. Now, um, if you go back up, there's an S in the numerator. Well, that looks like it's going to be cosine S, right? So good. So this is, and then this number here is actually one half to be squared. So this looks like cosine of one half T or just T over two. Well, let's look at this one. I couldn't pull that up, and it seems like I was about to mess up something. So let's leave that alone. So this, I'm going to break this down. Uh, this fraction is actually two parts, 2s over the denominator minus 6 all over the denominator. So this is the inverse transform of 2s over s squared plus 9. And then this is minus, I'm just looking at that minus 6 there. So this is uh, minus, uh, uh, just say the inverse transform. You could, could have pulled that 6 out, but I see the 6 and the 9 have something in common. So I'm just going to leave that 6 up there for right now. This is s squared plus 9. That's s squared plus 3 squared, right? So that 2 can be factored 
out or just pull it out to the front. So this is 2 times the inverse transform of s over s squared plus 3 squared minus the inverse transform of, look, this 6 is 2 times 3 all over s squared plus 3 squared. I need that 3 to my advantage. That 2 I can put in the in front. So I'm going to do that. The 2 here and the 3 there. 2 times 3 is 6. All right. So So now, the S is in the numerator, so that's going to be uh, cosine. So this is 2 times cosine of K. K is the 3, not K, but you got to write the 3. Two. 3T minus this 2. Well, my arrow's not there anymore. Uh, times this. This is going to be sine because this is a 3 which matches up to 3 squared. So this is a k in the, uh, the numerator. So this is times sine of 3t. Again, I want you to think these are actually solutions for a regular differential equation, uh, a solution that involves cosines and sines. Okay. Um, what about this one? Now look at that denominator, that's s squared plus 3s. We don't really have any uh, forms for Laplace transforms or something like that, so we need to break that down uh, by partial fraction decomposition because I do have uh, some formula for 1 over s, and I do have some formula for 1 over s plus or minus some number. Right? So, so we have here 1 over s squared plus 3s is equal to 1 over s times s plus 3. So, so here we're going to use partial fractions. Here to decompose. So this is A over S plus B over S plus 3. So multiply uh, both sides by the LCD, which is S times parentheses S plus 3. So that leaves us with 1 is equal to A times S plus 3 plus B times S, period. Let s equal to 0, and this implies that 1 is equal to 3a. So we get a is equal to 1 third. And then let s equal to negative 3. So we end up with 1, this 1, there's my arrow, is equal to, well, Minus 3 plus 3 cancels out, so we just have 0 times A, and over here we have negative 3 times B. So that gives us B is equal to negative 1 third. So this Laplace transform, inverse transform, based on these parts here, uh, just write it down here. We broke this down into its parts, inverse transform of, this is A over S, where A is one-third over S, plus the inverse transform of B, which is negative one-third over S plus three. 
So this is just one third times the inverse transform of one over s minus one third times the inverse transform of one over s plus three. Well, the inverse transform of one over s is just one. So this just gives us one third times that one minus this one third times the inverse transform of one over s plus three is e to the negative three t. Okay. And that's all we have there. Let's look at the, this number 19. Again, this is more of uh, partial fractions decomposition. So we have this s over, you can factor that. That's s, uh, let's say minus 3, I'll fix it, s minus 1. So that's s plus 3 times the expression s minus 1. So this is equal to a over s plus 3 plus b over s minus 1. Multiply both sides by the LCDs. We have s is equal to a times s minus 1 plus b times s plus 3. So now we let s equal to 1. Solve for b. Let s equal to negative 3. That'll help you solve for a. And each time you let s equal to something, don't forget you got to put that s value there as well. So let s equal to 1. So we end up with 1 is equal to that. This is 0, and this is b times uh, 1 plus 3. That's 4. So that implies that b is equal to 1 fourth. So next, let s equal to negative 3. So we get negative 3 for s. Negative 3 is equal to a times negative 3 minus 1. That's negative 4. So this implies that a is equal to 3 fourths. So, so we have the inverse transform of A, which is 3 over 4, all over S plus 3, plus the inverse transform of B, which is 1 fourth over S minus 1 for our answer. So this is 3 over 4 times the inverse transform of 1 over S plus 3. That's e to the negative 3t. And then this plus one fourth here times e to the t. Okay. Now, now after that, my favorite, and I say it's my favorite because we're getting closer to now being able to solve a differential equation using Laplace transform. This is one of the most important theorems, and this is called the transform of a derivative. If you reverse that and talk about the derivative of a transform, you're talking about something completely different, which is cuckoo caca uh, to me. Uh, I, for the derivative of a transform, which is not this, this is the transform of a derivative. What does that mean? That means that you're given a derivative, take the transform of it. The derivative of a transform is where you take the derivative of a transform, which that could be very, you know, uh, time consuming. For the derivative of a transform on the formula sheet, which you can use for the test, it's on there. So pretty cool. Matter of fact, this uh, this uh, theorem is on there as well. But let's see if we can simplify it or make sure we understand it. So if these functions and their uh, n minus one derivatives are continuous on some uh, uh, some interval from zero to uh, positive infinity. You notice that from the power series solutions, you had to define the solutions on a some interval that chops basically uh, at least uh, the the number line. You either talk about the values from negative infinity to, to zero, which doesn't make any sense, uh, or you talk about from zero to positive infinity, which would make sense. And and so here. Uh, 
and, and why does the, the value from zero to positive infinity make sense? Because eventually uh, uh, you look at T, uh, which is some uh, time uh, factor. Uh, and so if T is representing time, then you want to have, you know, certain values for T um, uh, that make sense. Uh, 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 T does not necessarily have to always represent time. Um, and so here are also of exponential order. Uh, and, and in other words, uh, uh, these functions are exponential. And if uh, uh, the, the nth here, derivative of f is a piece is piecewise continuous. That means that this derivative itself can be broken up into pieces, um, and each of those pieces are continuous on the same interval from zero to positive infinity, zero, including zero. Um, so then, this says that the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of f is equal to these guys here. Notice how, uh, just for uh, notation-wise, short notation, capital F represents the Laplace transform. So capital F of S um, represents the Laplace transform of F of, uh, of F of T. F of T is the function. You, we call it F of T, you can call it Y of T. And, and from here on out, we're going to refer to the function F as Y, just like back in algebra, we talk about Y is equal to something, right? Or Y of X. Here we talk about Y of T. So three of the derivatives that I think are important is the first derivative first derivative, second derivative, and the third derivative. We don't really use that much the third derivative because uh, we somewhat uh, focus a lot of our attention in, um, in mechanics uh, with uh, uh, the second derivative. And so the second derivative uh, uh, gives us uh, so many uh, variants, uh, whether it's uh, temperature, uh, whether uh, you, you deal with uh, fluid flow, um, <clears throat> uh, those, those normal parameters that we're concerned about in industry uh, in, in terms of, uh, of the temperature uh, on metal uh, and, and how does that temperature affect the, the metal, uh, uh, the pressure uh, as well. Uh, <clears throat> all of these uh, and, and all of these can be uh, confined to uh, uh, very sophisticated second derivative uh, uh, functions, uh, second derivative uh, functions, and also uh, second partial uh, derivative uh, functions as well too. So, the the first uh, derivative that is the Laplace transform of y prime of t. So we're going to use this formula. This is equal to s times y of s minus y of 0. I'm using this guy. So you just put that in your memory bank because you're going to need that. So the Laplace transform of y double prime t. Now notice how the formula, it says that whatever the derivative is, that number for the derivative, then the s is count down from that. So it's s to the n, s to the you know uh, n minus 1, so on until you don't have any more s's. The, the Laplace transforms, and not just so much the Laplace transform, but the initial conditions, this f of 0, f prime of 0, and so on, are initial conditions. They count up. So is, is f of 0, uh, it's f prime. So as s goes down, the, the initial uh, conditions for the derivatives go up. So this is f of 0, f prime of 0. The next one would be f double prime of zero, and you're going up, right? Uh, when do you stop? You stop at n minus one. Uh, and because here, the theorem says that we've only calculated uh, 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 up to n minus one derivatives being continuous. So this is s squared times y of s. y of s is just the Laplace transform of, of f of t. Here, we're calling uh, f of t, y of t. And this is minus s, s is count down, times y of 0, minus s squared, s to the 1, no more s, I count up to y prime of 0. When do I stop? I stop at n minus 1. Well, here n is 2, so n minus 1 is, is 1. So I stop at y prime of 0, based on this, this formula. Now, I, I will give you here um, the Laplace transform of 
the third derivative, which we don't need. But to show you, and you can keep on going the fourth derivative and so on. So this is s to the third times always times y of s, then minus y to the second times y of zero, minus y uh, minus s, s is counting down, times y prime of zero, and then this is minus y double prime of zero. Okay? Good. So that's what we need there. So now let's let's do what we've been called to do, and that is we've been called to solve differential equations. That gun in this class is called differential equations. We're going to talk about how to solve a differential equation. So we end up in this class with talking about uh, how to solve a differential equation using Laplace transform. And, 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 and I'm going to try to also, man, I want to try to give you this section 8.2, which is solving a matrix of differential equations. Um, uh, and, and and that's pretty cool stuff. Um, so so then you have several methods of solving differential equations. So we're going to take the Laplace transform of this differential equation. So this is the Laplace transform. I'm going to look at this. This is just y prime, if, if you will, minus y. That's equal to the Laplace transform of 1. Now, the cool thing is that the Laplace transform is a linear algebra. So right now, uh, at your disposal, um, there are three linear algebras that are most important to, uh, to you and to me. That is that the derivative is a linear algebra, the integral is a linear algebra, and then thirdly here, the very, just a powerful conclusion in mathematics, the Laplace transform is a linear algebra. What, why do I say that? If a, an operator is a linear algebra, then then whatever the operation on the sum becomes the, the sum of the operations, of the parts. So that is that I can break this sum down to, this is the Laplace transform of y prime minus the Laplace transform of y is equal to, and the Laplace transform of 1 is just 1 over s. Right? So I use that formula from uh, looking at the transform of a derivative. So this is s times y of s minus y of 0. Okay. And then this is minus, that minus there. This is the Laplace transform of y, which we just call y of s is equal to 1 over s. Now, y of 0 is set to be equal to 0. So this y of 0 here is going to be equal to 0. So all I have is s times y of s minus y of f is equal to 1 over s. So I could factor out y over s, y of s, excuse me. So that's just, I have left s minus 1 is equal to 1 over s. So now I divide both sides by s minus 1, so I have y of s is equal to 1 over s times s minus 1. Now, I take the inverse transform of both sides. So I take the inverse transform of this y of s, which is equal to the inverse transform of 1 over s times s minus 1. So the inverse transform of y over s is just y of t, because y of s is the Laplace transform. So this is the inverse transform of the Laplace transform of y of t. That's what that means is equal to the inverse transform of 1 over s times s minus 1. So from here on out, once you take the inverse transform of y over s, you just get y over t. Right? That's the whole purpose of, of talking about the inverse of the Laplace transform. This is the, the inverse of 1 over s. The work is over here. Now, we've been schooled up to this point to solve something like that. So 
we use partial fractions, so we have 1 over s times s minus 1 is equal to a over s plus b over s minus 1. Now I'm going to have to take a break. Okay, so now let's um, finish this. So we use the partial fractions decomposition. So this implies that if I multiply both sides by the LCD, I have 1 is equal to a times s minus 1 plus b times s. So if we let s equal to 1, this implies that b is equal to 1. And if you let s equal to 0, this implies that a is equal to negative 1. So what we have now is y of t is equal to the in inverse transform of a over s, which a is negative 1 over s, plus the inverse transform of b which is 1 over s minus 1. So y of t, the, the answer for the differential equation, is negative 1. And then this is plus e to the t. Now, isn't that a daisy? <laughs> so. I mean, you just solved this differential equation, you know, going back to the very first part of the semester. It has an initial condition, the Laplace transform. What is so neat about it is that it solves differential equation inclusive, inclusive of uh, the initial conditions. So, you know, back up until this moment, uh, when you solve differential equation, you have to solve the differential equation. Then you have to go back and and uh, solve for the constant using the initial conditions. But here, this is all inclusive. Because of this formula here, which those f of zeros and f prime of zeros are the initial conditions. All right, now that one's pretty cool. Uh, but there's another one, the last one in this section, that I want to do, which I think is more involved. Um, so let's look at this. here. And just to be honest with you, we, we kind of end up with uh, this course for the Laplace transform. How do I solve a differential equation using the Laplace transform? This is, you know, uh, 9 out of 10. This is, this is it. Uh, I say 9 out of 10 because the 10th uh, part would be uh, how to solve a, a differential equation using the Laplace transform if the differential equation is non-homogeneous, right? So... But it's still going to be the same method. Uh, we need some more uh, techniques to add, and so that's why we'll cover some more information in the next section. But let's go ahead and solve this. Take the Laplace transform of everything you see, Laplace transform of y double prime. I'm going to break this up into parts because the Laplace transform is a linear algebra. If there's, if there's something you can take out of this class, I mean something that's really strong and powerful, theoretically powerful, is that now you know that there are three linear algebras that you have at your disposal. A derivative is one, an integral, number two, and then also thirdly, a Laplace transform. Very good. So this is plus five times the Laplace transform of y prime plus four times the Laplace, Laplace transform of y, which you just, just call uh, y of s um, uh, there to denote that y of s represents the Laplace transform. And that's equal to the Laplace transform of 0. So this first part, this is s squared times y of s minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. Now I'll go to plus this plus 5, put in parentheses, this is s times y of s minus y of 0. That's done, plus 4 times y of s. The Laplace transform of 0 is just Zippo. So now this is s squared times y of s minus, now 
y, y of zero, that initial condition is just one. So this is just minus s, s times one. Minus y prime of zero, well that's zero, plus five times this s times y of s, plus five times y of zero, y of zero is one plus four times y of s, and that's equal to zero. So I'm going to group the y of s's together. And when you do that, typically you will end up with uh, uh, three terms. I have three terms here, one, two, three. If it's two terms, you have two terms in, in the brackets or parentheses, which somewhat looks like exactly what you have, um, but watch how, how it's written. Uh, the, the derivatives represent the s's, so this is s square, I'm fracturing out a, a y, y of s from here, from there, and from there. That matches up to these three, right? It's just something just you can have in your head so you know that you're on the right track. This is plus 5s plus 4. Close that up. Now get the other terms on the other side. This is minus s becomes positive s on the right side, and this is plus 5 becomes minus 5 on the right side. Now I'm going to divide and conquer. So this is y of s is equal to s minus 5 all over s squared plus 5s plus 4. Now try to factor. See if you can factor. And if something cancels out from the numerator and denominator, then you know you, know you, you, can, um, you can solve a little bit easier. Factoring this guy doesn't really help us that much. So this is s minus 5 um, all over this is s plus 4 times s plus 1. Now, it would have been cool if this was a s minus 5 here, and we cancel that out, right? Make the answer a whole lot quicker to get to, but no problem. We're going to take the inverse transform of both sides. So when you do that, this y of s becomes y of t, because the inverse, this is already a Laplace transform, right? This guy here is automatically already the Laplace, tra tra Laplace transform, Ooh, it's a little squiggly squiggly, squiggly squigs. This is the Laplace transform of y of t. That's what that is. So take the inverse of that, just get y of t. And this is equal to the inverse transform of s minus 5 over s plus 4 times s plus 1. And this is a long section, but it's it's like close to, you know, we're getting close to an hour and 15 minutes, which is typical of our time. So, so as my band director used to say in high school, don't tell me nothing. So uh, anyway, um, let's see. <laughs> um, ooh, don't spit on the screen, Ernest. Um, so we use partial fractions. This is S minus 5 over S plus 4 times s plus 1 is equal to a over s plus 4 plus b over s plus 1. Multiply by the LCD, we get s minus 5 is equal to a times s plus 1 plus b times s plus 4. So let's see. Let s equal to negative 1. I want to get rid of this a to solve for b. So if if s is negative 1, this is negative 1 minus 5 is equal to b times negative 1 plus 4. Well, this implies that's negative 6 is equal to 3b. So 3b, baby, is equal to negative 2. So next, let s equal to negative 4. So this implies that and we're looking at this, this line right here. So we get uh, s is negative 4 minus 5 is equal to a times negative 4 plus 1. And then the, the b, this is b uh, times 0, right? So that's it's just zero. So this implies that we have negative nine 
is equal to negative 3a. I, I know it's a. Thank you. I know somebody's saying it's supposed to be an a. Yeah. Okay. So I got your. Okay, anyway. Um, so this is. Uh, implies that a is equal to 3 All right and so we keep on pushing with that and and let's see what we have and So this is S there. I think I made a blunder. This is minus Y of zero. Y of zero is a one. So this is minus five. This is minus five here. So it becomes plus five on the other side. Thank you. That's, that's what I get for being cocky, right? Um, this is 5 minus 1. This is a minus 5. I don't know what I was looking at. But I know what I did. I messed up. So this is minus. So it becomes plus over there. Daggone it. This is plus, plus, plus. Plus, plus. So this is plus, and all that over there is wrong, wrong, wrong. This is plus, and all that over there is wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Um, so let's see. We have this is four is equal to 3b. So this implies that b is equal to 4 over 3. And this right here is 1 is equal to negative 3a. So a is equal to negative 1 third. So we have negative 1 third and then uh, than the four thirds. Cool, cool. So let's see. We have y of t is equal to. This is the inverse transform of that a, which is negative one third over s plus four. Plus the inverse transform of the b, which is the four thirds over s plus one. And so we get y of t is equal to negative one-third times e to the negative 4t plus four-thirds times e to the negative t. Okay. So we get negative one-third e to the negative 4t plus four-thirds times e to the negative t. Um, so that's it. Thank you.